about his ankle, but clearly the body weight is what did it to him. When he gets all this body weight on that knee, and it looked bad, Greeny. Like, I wasn't thinking Jimmy Butler was going to finish this game. He had to make the foul shots to stay in the game. He would, but clearly hampered all night. More on that in a minute. In the meantime, the Sixers were down pretty much the entire game, but in the fourth quarter, they're working their way back, and Embiid's doing it from deep. Gave him a clean look. One of the few he got from the perimeter knocks it down. Jimmy Butler had impact plays defensively all night, typically leading to immediate offense, as he does here again on the breakaway. See the pain on his face. He would score 19. Now, back and forth they would go. That's a great play by Nicholas Batum who had 20 off the bench. It's a one-point game. Three minutes to go. Embiid, here's another three. And again, walks into a trail three. Bam, back in the paint protecting. And Joel Embiid, with that shooting touch, knocks down a huge shot. Sixers up two, but we're going back and forth here, people. Tyler Hero on the next possession. Miami up one. Next possession. Embiid, offensive rebound and one. One of the few times he really threw his weight around in the paint at a critical time. The offensive rebound and the free throw to follow. Tied at 96 in the final minute. That's Oubre who had 11 and 8. He would make a free throw Sixers by 3. 30 seconds to go. That's for the tie, and that's the huge play by Batum. And that's what he's known for. Like, he had great offense in this game, but that's what Nicholas Batum is known for in this league. The length on the perimeter comes up with the deflection. So, the Sixers come from behind and survive and advance despite a very slow start for Joel Embiid. An inefficient 12 points in the first three quarters, but in the fourth, he had 11 he played 38 minutes for the game, his most since returning from injury. Up next now for Philly, the New York Knicks. Here's Nick Nurse. I think they're for real. I think they're really good. I think they're they're fast. I think they can shoot. I think they hit the glass. I think they guard you. I think they've earned that seed. They've they've played really well and beaten a lot of good teams. So we'll have our work to do here in the next couple of days to get ready for them. That series will begin on Saturday, and so let's dive into it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at last night, and we'll look ahead a little bit, and we can do both by my asking you this question, Monica. Mm -hmm. If you're Tom Thibodeau and all of the New York Knicks, and you're watching that game last night, after all of the hype and all of the talk, oh, the Sixers are the biggest threat to Boston and Embiid, all that kind of stuff, how do you feel right now if you're the Knicks watching that team on that floor last night? Confident. Uh, like you said, an efficient 12 points in, first th th in the first three quarters and 11 points in the fourth. Joel Embiid is a force when he is healthy. But the argument is, is he healthy, right? And so I think you, you could suggest that he will get going and get better through the series, or will that knee continue to wear down? And so if you're the New York Knicks, a team that is one of four that was top five or top ten, excuse me, in defensive and offensive rating, you are trusting the way that you've been able to play basketball down the backstretch of the season. You're confident in the collective of your pieces, and you got Jalen Brunson. Han, Han, what did you see from the Sixers, and in particular from Embiid last night? That he's on one leg, that he played really slow, and that if I'm the Knicks, I have four bigs I'm going to throw at him but you have to play fast. The Knicks play the slowest pace in the NBA. This plays into Embiid, who really doesn't want to run and can't run right now. You could see it. He also was not engaged defensively at all. You heard the interview with Nick Nurse and Lisa Salters when he said, when she was asking what Embiid needs to do, he said, needs to get some stuff done on the defensive end because he had no presence whatsoever defensively. He did have 15 rebounds. But if I'm the Knicks, I'm throwing body and body and body at him. They have several bigs they can do that with. And they just also have to run on everything and just get him in transition because he is definitely playing on one leg. So we had some sound bites from, from Embiid after the game. The quality of it just wasn't that good. You couldn't hear him that clearly. So we're not going to play it for you. But he called it a nasty win last night, which it sort of was in a lot of ways. And that sort of figures to be what we're going to see coming up, maybe four, five, six, or seven nasty games between them and the Knicks. Well, I'll sum up how nasty it was. I'm talking directly to the city officials in Philadelphia, maybe even the governor in the state of Pennsylvania right now. The statue of Nicholas Batum should be erected. <laughs> that statue should be up by the time they play their first home game against the Knicks, okay, by game three. Because, listen, here's why. Without Nicholas Batum last night, their season lasts four more games. Four more games. At most, they might lose the, against the winner of the 9-10. If they win that game, they're getting swept by the Celtics the way Joel Embiid looks right now. So if I'm the Knicks, I'm watching that, I'm licking my chops for all the reasons they both said. There's three things when you watch Embiid. It's not the shot making. He's always going to make shots. He could be out there in a full body cast. He's going to make shots because he's that skilled. Three things I always look for when, when, whenever we're talking about Embiid and an injury. Is he changing ends of the floor? He was not changing mm -hmm. ends of the floor. Is he, is he sealing like with intent in the paint? Nope. He wasn't doing it at all. And then does he move laterally defensively to Allen's point when he's really good on top of his game, even the way he looked when he first came back from the injury during that five or six game stretch to close out the season? 
when he is tracking guards to the rim, when they've turned the corner on him and he's jumped out, when he is going you know, block to block to meet a guy as a last line of defense, when you see that explosiveness defensively, that's when you know Joel Embiid is right. It has nothing to do with shot making. He's always going to do that. Uh, it's the other things, and none of that was there. If I'm the Knicks and I'm watching that game, I am licking my chops right now because, because Joel Embiid is not right. Plays into everything the Knicks do with Jalen Brunson. High screen roll. Everything is the pick and roll. They get the big involved. A lot of times, their big man sets the screen, and then the opponent's big. You see it, Monica, mm-hmm. all the time. You call the games. You have to either come over and trap. You have to have active legs. And if you don't, Jalen Brunson will shred you defensively all day long or just simply feed it to the big who's open in the paint, and they have guys that can finish in the paint. So that's a dangerous place for Joel Embiid to be defensively. Listen, I am very curious to see how Nick Nurse looks to potentially protect Joel Embiid because of all the things that you guys just mentioned. I do think, and Nicholas Batum is interesting that you mentioned that, I think that the absence of DeAnthony Melton for them defensively is something that has gone a little under the radar but has impacted what the Sixers want to do in terms of stopping guards like Jalen Brunson. But to me, I, I just... For the Sixers, I don't think, Greeny, that we should conflate them being potentially the biggest threat to the Boston, meaning that they are at the form that Joel Embiid was before the injury. Mm-hmm. Right. You say that when you look at They're the roster, right? And I get it, but arguably you can make the same argument about the Knicks in terms of how they've been playing basketball, the terrific season that Jalen Brunson is having. So they play, <coughs> pardon me, they play Saturday, Monday. So that, that if you're just trying Those to get a sense off. of how long it will be for Embiid and everything else, the, the, the first two games of that series are with just the one day between them, Saturday, Monday. Then they get a few days before they go to Philly next Thursday. So we'll see what the status is for Joel Embiid. As far as the status for Jimmy Butler, You saw the injury during the game. He did finish, but he was clearly in pain. Here he was afterwards. They fear he sustained a possible MCL injury. He said for an MRI today, here's what he said afterward. I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but I mean, I hope that I'm fine. I hope I wake up tomorrow and I can still stick and move. But, you know, right now I can't say that that's the case. I mean, I fell and he landed and my knee just didn't do well, I guess. I don't know. But uh, it's, it's not a good feeling. I can tell you that. It's pretty ominous, right? I mean, I'm not a doctor, but but if, if I were a doctor and he said that to me, I would be very concerned. No doubt about it. I, I couldn't believe, actually, he finished the game. And and he mm-hmm. still made plays. He still had an impact in the game. And, and look, Jimmy Butler's not the type of guy. Like, if, he, if he's talking like that and he's leaving the arena like that, that is a major concern, obviously, for the Heat, who have, look, an opportunity still to get in. And they got to play one home game. Uh, against the Chicago Bulls, and they get in, and their reward is going to be the Celtics with maybe a limited Jimmy Butler. So this could possibly change even the prospects of, you know, how competitive could they be in that series if he is in any way limited or misses time. The season's over. It, it's, yeah. Well, it's just worth reminding everyone, for whatever it's worth, I know the teams are different, that they did come out of the play-in last year and beat the Celtics in a seven-game series in the Eastern Conference Finals, winning Game 7 in Boston. Much different team. I understand oh that. Much the different legend team. continues both, to grow. Both teams I got, I got to be honest. When you yeah. saw the look on, on Alonzo Mourning's face, they cut after the injury, they cut to the bench, yeah. they cut to Spolstra, and then they did a great job on this last 